Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a halftone dot pattern in Adobe Photoshop. We're going to do it first in black and then see how we would recolor it. So I'm going to start with a new file and my new file is going to be 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels but pretty much you could have whatever document size you like. Just remember that we're working in a raster program so scaling up is not ideal. So try and start with as large a document as you're going to need to use. I'm you're working here in RGB color with a white background. So I'm just going to click create. Now I'm going to the shapes panel here and I want the ellipse tool. I'm going to set the fill here to a gradient. So I'm going to click on gradient and then in the basics area, these are the new basics gradients. This is a foreground to background. Now that's black to white because that's the colors I have selected here. This is black to transparent, but this is always going to be black to white. So you can always get your black to white from this dialog, just choose this third one. We want it to be radial, so make sure you select this and drop down and make it a radial gradient. And then we're just going to hold the shift key as we drag out a fairly sizable sort of circle. I'm going to put it approximately middle of the document. It doesn't really matter if it's not in the middle, but just sort of so there's plenty of space around it. Now it's got a stroke which I don't want, so I'm just going to click on stroke and give it no stroke at all. Let's just click out of the way here and see what we've got. In the layers panel, you can see that the shape is on a layer all by itself. It's black sort of fuzzy in the middle, peters out to white at the edge. We're going to apply a filter to this. So I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to filter and then down here to pixelate and we're going to use color halftone because we can make a black and white halftone from that very easily. Now, because we've got a shape here, you are going to be prompted with this option here. And you're going to choose Convert to Smart Object because this shape right now, the gradient fill that we've got is not going to be very nice at all. So we want to be able to edit it, but I want you to understand why it's not so nice. So let's convert this to a smart object so we can make changes to it. Now in the color halftone dialog to get a black halftone, you're going to set all these channels to the same value. And this is also an angle as well. So we're going to get black and white, but we're going to use 45 to start off with because that's going to be a really nice angle on our halftone. The radius is the maximum radius of the circles in the middle. I'm using 30. I think that's a pretty good setting. I'll click OK. Now you can see immediately that the issue is that the middle of this shape is all black. And so we're not getting a really nice pattern of halftone dots. And the problem is the gradient that we used. Now before we go on to the gradient, let's all have a look too at one of the settings in the halftone dialog. So I'm going to double click here on this color halftone entry here because I want to make changes to it. What I'm going to do is set all of these to 90. Noticing that there's a really nice angle on these dots here, when we change it, we get a grid of dots. So you get a choice here. If you use 45, you get a really nice angle. If you use 90, you get this sort of grid look. But we need to fix the middle of the shape. So what we're going to do is double click here on this little thumbnail indicator that tells us that we're working with a smart object. So when I do that, I open the smart object. So this is just this gradient filled shape. And the problem is with the gradient. So what I'm going to do is select one of these tools here, the ones that affect actual shapes, because that's the only way I can get access to this up here. And what I want to do is to change the gradient. So I'm going to click on this and here is my gradient. So at the moment, my gradient goes from black to white. Well, firstly, I'd like to soften the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to bring this in here. I'm going to click on the white again. I'm going to make another white stop here. And then I'm going to just click here to make another opacity stop. So right now, these black ones, these are all 100% opacity. But this one here, I want to make it zero. So the white color you can see now is pulling away from the edge of the shape. It's going to peter out before it gets to the very edges. Now the other problem and the main problem is this black. It's way too black and that's why we get all these dots in the middle all jammed up against each other. So we're going to double click here and we're going to change it. And we're going to pick something that is about a mid gray. So down the edge here, I've got my color picker. You can see I've clicked hue here. You can see every time you change 
one of these options, select one of these buttons, you get a different look. Well, I'm working on this hue one and my mid gray is down this edge here. You can see it's 137, 137, 137, not quite mid gray, that would be 128, 128, 128, but they're all even numbers in that red, green and blue channel, that's gray. I'll click OK. So this doesn't look like it's going to be particularly good in terms of giving us a half tone set of dots. There doesn't seem to be much here, but let's see if there is. So up here on the panel, I've got my ellipse one PSB file. This is the embedded smart object. It's embedded in this file over here. So what we have to do is click to close it and we say, yes, we do want to save the changes. And then the changes get saved to our original file. And we've got a really, really nice half tone. So working with a half tone that is from about mid gray to white is going to give you a much better result than using a black and white gradient. I'm going to double click on this color half tone. I'm going back to my 45 degrees because I just think it looks nicer. Creating this as a smart filter is a really good idea because if you decide you want bigger dots or smaller dots or a different angle on your channels, then you'll be able to reset it without having to start all over again. And again, 45 is going to give us the angles and the fact that we have every one of these channels, 45 is going to give us black and white. So we'll just click OK. So there is the black and white version of the color half tone. Now let's see how we could make it a color itself. To turn our black and white half tone into color, we need to add some color to it. So I'm going to click on this layer that is the actual half tone and I'm going to image and then adjustments and hue saturation. This will allow us to colorize this layer. So firstly, we're going to select colorize and then we're going to increase the lightness because if you don't do that, you're not going to see any color at all. You can then drag the hue slider across until you pick up approximately the color you want and then start increasing the saturation. So somewhere between the lightness adjustment and saturation and hue is going to be the selector for the color that you want to use. So I want to use a sort of turquoise. So I'm going to boost the saturation a little bit and the lightness. I'll click OK. So this color is now baked into this layer. But if you have a look at the layer, you'll see that it's actually the half tone plus some white. So let's see how we're going to extract just the dots on a layer by themselves. First of all, we need to drop the white out of this layer. So firstly, I'm going to turn off the background so I can see what I'm doing. With this ellipse layer selected, I'm going down to the FX button here. I'm going to blending options. Now, these can look pretty scary, but it's fine. They're really easy to work with. On our current layer, we've got color and we've got white. So what we're going to do is we're going to say to Photoshop, everywhere where there's white, we want you to drop it out of the image. I'm just going to drag this slider across a little bit. You'll see that there's a line down the slider. So I'm going to hold the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac, and just drag this to one side. This is going to give us a slightly gentler transition between the white and the transparency if there's anything remaining. So I'm just pretty happy with this effect. I'll click OK. Now you could test how that looks by filling this background layer with black temporarily. So let's just fill it with black. And you can see that you've got still a little bit of white around the edges. Now, if you want to kill that white a little bit more, we can go back into this blending option and we can readjust this. So we're going to bring the slider, this white slider across a little bit. So I'm not seeing any white around the edges of these shapes anymore and then click OK. So that's an effect that now has dropped all the white out of the image. I'm going to reset my background, so I'm going to fill it back up with white again. The problem with this at this stage, and it's a really minor problem, is that this effect is not baked in. And if we want to bake this effect in, we have to find a way of rasterizing the effect. Now, if I right click this and choose rasterize layer, you'll see that the white comes back. So that's obviously not working at all. You can see that there's content here and you can see that there's still a blending option. So I'm just going to undo that. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an empty layer in underneath this. So I'm going to hold the control key on a PC command on a Mac, just drop an empty layer in. If it goes in the top, just pull it down to the bottom. So now we've got our colored half tone, but it's still got this white around it, which is being removed from the image using this blend mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this layer and we're going to merge it with this one. And if we merge it down with this empty layer, you'll see that we've actually dropped out all the white. All the white has gone. On. So we've now got a half tone pattern of dots on its very own layer and we've got a white layer or whatever color layer we want to use underneath and the only color on this particular layer is the color that we applied to it. So there is a process for creating a black and white half tone pattern in Adobe Photoshop and also applying a color to it. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.